What's up, my comic comrades? We're about to jump into the greatest fights between Red Skull and Captain America. Why? Because they have some of the most insane confrontations in comic history. That's why. I mean, Red Skull is the same kind of arch nemesis to Cap that Joker is to Batman, so things have a tendency to get brutal. Also, as promised, Variant's Whatnot Shop is live, and our entire Buy It Now catalog of limited run exclusives is officially available, including the New York Comic Con Whatnot exclusive Rob Liefeld Captain America issue one variant, both the trade dress version and the virgin option. Well, actually, be sitting down with Rob Liefeld in person for our first live show next week, but more on that in a second. Because if you use the variant invite link in the description to sign up for your free WhatNot account, you'll get $10 off your first purchase in our shop. But again, you'll only get that $10 credit if you sign up for your free WhatNot account using our invite link. If you're not familiar with WhatNot, it is the single greatest live shop platform where you can connect with your favorite creators like us, while also picking up incredible deals through live auctions or buy it now catalogs on items from comics and other collectibles, to trading cards, sneakers, and almost anything else you can think of. Anyway, this Captain America issue one is Rob Liefeld's homage to the legend legendary Heroes Reborn Captain America image he released in 1996, this time featuring Sam Wilson as Captain America. The demand for this cover is pretty nuts, so if you want one, which I know you do, click our invite link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen to go to our WhatNot shop and lock in one or both covers for yourself now. We also have a limited number of New York Comic Con WhatNot exclusive Battle Damage Batman and Superman Handmade by Robots vinyl figures, along with 17 other WhatNot exclusive variant issues, including New Mutants 98 Trade by Rob Liefeld, which is a limited reprint of the first appearance of Deadpool, Amazing Spider-Man 1, also by Rob Liefeld, Mandalorian 2 by Paolo Villanelli, which is the first comic appearance of Grogu, aka Baby Yoda. Then we have this epic reprint of the iconic Detective Comics issue 27, which of course is the first appearance of Batman drawn by Aaron Bartling, and the list goes on. But this first drop is just the beginning Variant Nation for our first WhatNot Live show, which will also stream here on the Variant YouTube channel. We will be bringing you guys our conversation with Rob Liefeld himself to talk about about his new Captain America cover, the new comics he has coming up next year, his thoughts on Deadpool in the MCU, and a ton more. We'll also be giving away a bunch of comics and collectibles. So again, use our link to get that free credit before you grab some of the exclusives available now. Then make sure to follow the Variant Comics Whatnot shop and bookmark our first show this Tuesday, October 17th at 5 p.m. CST, so you don't miss any of the hotness. Our new WhatNot shop is going to be our way of bringing you guys high value exclusives and limited edition collectibles, as well as doing regular insane giveaways. We couldn't be more excited about it and I hope you guys will come along for the ride. With that, let's dive into the greatest Red Skull versus Captain America battles shall we? The most obvious place to start would be the first time these two rivals faced off. Now, even though Red Skull first appeared in Captain America Comics 1, the true Red Skull, Johann Schmidt, didn't make his debut until issue 7. Anyway, in the issue, Captain America and Bucky go up against their most formidable villain yet, the Red Skull, a character who would go on to cement himself as a staple for Cap. As the issue goes on, we learn that Red Skull is Johann Schmidt, a top operative of the Nazis and a master of disguise. He devised a plan to destroy a munitions factory, threatening the war effort and American lives. He basically wants to undermine the war effort and strike fear into the hearts of Americans. Of course, all of this leads Cap and Bucky to the Red Skull, where the fight ensues. Red Skull tries to run, but Bucky says, not so fast, mister, you have some explaining to do. But Red Skull just turns around and gives him a right hook across the face, at which point Cap tackles Red Skull from behind. But Red Skull, being a master of disguise, fools Cap into thinking he's just a stagehand. And when Cap lets him go, Red Skull reveals himself, saying, looks like I fooled Captain America again. Cap and Bucky then have one more confrontation with him, with Red Skull saying, this time, dear Captain, I'm going to settle my score with you in your blood. But come on, this is Cap, so he punches him across the face while Red Skull was holding a rifle to him, but at that point, Skull's mobsters fire at Cap, letting Red Skull get away, but not for long. Cap is able to catch up with Red Skull, who's shocked, saying, no, impossible, how did you get here? Captain America replies, by carrier pigeon, wise guy, while giving him a right hook like he did to Hitler on the cover of Captain America 1. And just like that, we have the first Captain America and Red Skull fight. But moving on, we have their epic battle from Captain America issue 300, their battle to the death, if you will. You see, Red Skull discovers that his body is quickly deteriorating to his proper age. He becomes alarmed that he'll die with unfinished business, if you will, and thus orchestrates what he wants to be his final confrontation with Captain America. It really starts in issue 299, but the fight goes down in issue 300, and the battle basically lasts the entire issue. The story literally starts off with the two trading blows, as the caption says, in a bunker beneath Skull's house, the final battle, a war that began 40 years before, 
has reached its climax. It is a battle between madness and sanity, between debauchery and decency, between the man Red Skull and America's greatest hero, Captain America. Captain America then tells Red Skull, my friends, the woman I love, they were innocent pawns in your sick game and you killed them. How could you do such a thing, you stinking heartless animal? As he punches Red Skull across the face, but Red Skull just retaliates, saying at last, the fire burns in your eyes, the fire of cosmic loathing, of divine madness. You finally see that this is the way it must be. Two gods locked in a raging battle for all eternity. As he punches Captain America across the face. Then Captain America just hammer fists his jaw saying, shut up, we are not gods, we are just two tired old men. But yet again, Red Skull returns the favor and the two keep going back and forth as Captain America says, I don't wanna hear from you anymore. But Red Skull says, you will hear more Captain America, you will hear this. We are both dying right now. An irreversible poison courses through our bloodstream, eating away at us. The Reaper is ours, perhaps minutes away. And when he arrives, we will face him together. Our our spirits intertwined. We will carry on the battle until the end of time. It is destiny's wish, our sole reason for being. That's right, a little backstory here. The two were previously poisoned with Red Skull goading Captain America into fighting him one last time by killing everyone he loved in the previous issue, issue 299. Captain America then tackles Red Skull saying, shut up Skull and listen to me for once. Without a second thought, you pressed a button and destroyed the house above us. You murdered everyone I loved. You murdered Mother Superior, your own daughter as well. And why? Simply to goad me into fighting you this one final time. Well, you got what you wanted. I'm fighting you, but not for your delusions of destiny. Not so I could die. I I'm fighting to live. Captain America then starts beating Red Skull mercilessly, demanding, tell me Skull, where's the antidote? Red Skull replies, you unmitigated fool, there is no antidote. Captain America then says, then I'll find some other way to survive after I've dealt with you. While punching Red Skull so hard, he flies back several feet. But Red Skull tries to stay insane. Admit it, Captain, I've gotten to you. I succeeded in bringing you down to my level. It doesn't matter if you beat me, I have won. Captain America stands over Red Skull with his fist raised, replying, maybe you're right, Skull, maybe you have gotten to me. I have fought hundreds of foes in my career, criminals, madmen, tyrants, and never have I been moved to truly hate a man because he was my enemy. But you revel in atrocity, bask in evil, and delight in depravity. I hate you, Skull. I hate what you are and what you've done to my friends and what you've done to the world. I hate you with the passion that frightens me. I see now that the only way I'm ever gonna be free of you is to see you dead. Red Skull provokes saying, then kill me, Captain, kill me. Captain America contemplates, his fist trembling as he pulls back for the final blow, but then drops his fist and Red Skull says, no. Red Skull removes his mask, pleading, no, you can't stop now. You can't deny me my destiny. You must kill me. Please, Captain, I implore you, kill me. Red Skull's anger transitions to sadness and sorrow with Captain America saying, easy, Skull easy. Captain America, being the symbol of hope and righteousness that he is, picks him up and tries to help him, but Red Skull eventually dies. This then transitions into issue 301. The fight illustrates why Captain America is the embodiment of America's spirit, with Red Skull representing the dark forces that menace the nation. The conflict almost takes on a symbolic tone, with Captain America standing as a beacon for America's soul. The narrative is incredibly well-crafted, bearing resemblance to confrontations between Batman and the Joker, diving deep into psychology. Red Skull even refers to both of them as gods. But as we know, deaths in comic books are often short-lived, and Red Skull is no exception. Just 50 issues later, we discover that after Red Skull's demise, Armin Zola transferred Red Skull's consciousness into a clone body of Captain America. In this new form, he becomes an American businessman, discreetly penetrating the US government under the alias John Smith. He would even play a part in having Captain America replaced by John Walker, who later becomes the US agent, setting him against Steve Rogers, the original Captain America. It's worth noting that during this period, Steve Rogers was known as the Captain, donning a black and red costume later adopted by the US agent. After defeating John Walker, Steve Rogers is confronted by Red Skull, who praises saying, bravo my old foe, good show. But then again, I knew you wouldn't disappoint me. I've learned to never underestimate you. After delivering his typical villainous monologue, the Red Skull attempts to poison Rogers with the dust of death hidden in a cigarette. However, it backfires, transforming Red Skull's face back into its signature Red Skull as he flees. Although this wasn't a physical altercation, it remains one of the most iconic confrontations, particularly since Red Skull was believed to be dead. Next, we delve into the Ultimate Comics, issues one through six, presenting a radically different version of Red Skull, arguably even more menacing. In the Ultimate Universe, Red Skull isn't Johann Schmidt. 
He's in fact Steve Rogers' illegitimate son. Their first encounter occurs in Ultimate Avengers issue 1. Here Captain America combats adversaries, this time in helicopters, dispatching foes. As he remarks, New York gets flooded and half the planet almost goes under. Who would use that as an opportunity for robbery? Red Skull reveals himself, exclaiming ruthless opportunist as he punches Captain America. He continues, every other day of the year, the Baxter building is locked up tighter than Fort Knox. When else could we have infiltrated? Assaulting Captain America with a pipe as he adds, I'm told this was supposed to be Mr. Fantastic's masterpiece. AIM certainly seems thrilled. In another helicopter, Hawkeye holding a gun to the pilot inquires, what the hell is going on over there? The pilot responds, I believe your guy just encountered our guy, Agent Barton. Red Skull grasping Captain America by the hair taunts him by saying, I bet you're wondering who I am. How a man you've never met before could best you. Come closer. I'll enlighten you, Captain. As he whispers in Captain America's ear before hurling him from the helicopter, gloating, isn't that fascinating? Hawkeye leaps from his helicopter to rescue Captain America, deploying his parachute just in time. Observing from above, Red Skull comments, nice catch. Hawkeye Perplex asks, how did he do that? Who were you fighting? Steve Rogers somberly replies, he claimed he's my son. Their next showdown is in issue six of the same series. Now, Red Skull possesses the Cosmic Cube at this point in time. Notably, this iteration of Red Skull is also a super soldier, explaining his dominance over Captain America during their initial face-off. Now wielding the Cosmic Cube, he's a formidable foe, even battling and besting the Hulk. When Captain America finally intervenes, he employs a jet to impale Red Skull with its nose cone spike thing. Towards the climax, Red Skull admits his desire for the Cosmic Cube was not world dominance, but to rewind time, seeking a different fate. Ending on a sympathetic note, he laments, is it truly too much to ask to be happy for once? Nick Fury fires back, happy endings are reserved for Chinese massage parlors. Right, Dr. Laskoff? She replies, oh, I don't know, General. Some outcomes are quite favorable, before shooting him point blank. The story doesn't wrap up as one might think. Nevertheless, the confrontations between Red Skull and Captain America in this series are among the most savage in comics. There have been countless epic battles between Captain America and Red Skull, but we've spotlighted the ones we think are the best and our favorites. But now it's your turn. What are your favorite fights between these two icons? Let us know in the comment section below. And don't miss out on our first big drop in our What Not Shop. Just click the invite link in the description below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time when we talk about the history of Clayface.